As a web developer, I love everything about Angular 2 development except bootstrapping the application. It can be difficult, there's a lot of files to memorize, and what I'm going to show you today is a Yelman generator I created that allows me to bootstrap applications and have everything set up so I can run this Angular 2 app, and then more importantly, add metadata files so that I can use Visual Studio Code as a first class engine for development and debugging of my Angular 2 application. So first, let's go look at my machine. So I have my desktop here, and I'm going to open a command prompt, and it's going to open in my user directory. So I'm just going to CD to the desktop, and I'm going to create a new folder called Angular Demo, and I'm going to CD into that Angular Demo folder. And you can actually see that folder right here in Windows Explorer. Now, within this Angular Demo folder, I'm going to run my generator. But if you don't have the generator installed, which you probably won't, you just go to npm, install. It's going to be installed globally. And the generator is called Start Angular. Hit Enter. It's going to install the generator. And if you're not that familiar with NPM, it's actually going to install the generator in your user app data folder. So it would be C, users, app data, roaming. And you'll see NPM, the modules. And you'll see your various generators. You see I have quite a few generators installed. The one we're going to use today is Generator Start Angular. And you'll see all the files here. So what is the Start Angular Generator? Well, if you go to Yelman website, so yelman.io, and you go look at the list of generators, you can actually search for my generator. Start Angular. Of course, you have to spell it correct. And you'll see, by clicking on it, the GitHub page for it. So it's open source. You can submit PRs against it. There's already been a couple issues and pull requests. So it's definitely not, hor not incredibly active, but it's active enough. And you're free to come here, change it, fork it, use it for whatever you want. And it's, it's just open out there for you to use. Now that it's generator installed, I'm just going to run yo start Angular. And you'll see that it creates all of my files. And since it's so kind, it's going to run npm install for me. So what's going on right now? Well, it's installing all the dependencies I need to run this Angular 2 application. So that's the core, the different modules for Angular 2, everything you need to run a full Angular 2 app. So that's all being installed right now when you run your start Angular. So you don't have to remember to run npm install. While it's installed, I want to show you some of these files. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either go to the folder, right click, and go to open with code. I don't want to disturb this process. You could optionally open another command prompt, CD desktop, Angular demo, code dot, and open Visual Studio Code in the context of that directory. Now, from here, you'll see quite a few files. You'll see all the stuff you expect for Angular 2 applications, so TypeScript configuration, system.js config, package.json with all the appropriate Angular modules, the standard index.html, standard gitignore, and then I created two sample um, components for you within a sample module. So you'll see a main TS file that runs the browser platform, your app module class that uses two components, app component, and child component. So everything is in there and ready to go so that we can actually use it in development. Now you'll see that npm install has ran. So everything's installed. We can actually go into Visual Studio Code and hit F5 right away. And it's going to use the TypeScript compiler to build our application and then launch it using npm select server. So just like with Visual Studio, you can actually go in and just open the project, hit F5, and get a full debug experience. That's just not something that you're used to with Visual Studio Code. But right here, all the metadata is there so that you just can launch the application immediately without having to configure anything or make any extra files. It's all built into this um, bootstrapper for you. So let's actually go and look at how that magic is done. So switching back to Visual Studio Code, we'll see that we have a task.json file. I'm going to close my console so you can see it. And in this task.json file, you'll see that it runs the node command. So it runs node as a global command. And then it passes in the TypeScript compiler as an argument to node. So TypeScript module, 
with the watch parameter and it tells it to compile this as a project. The current directory is a project. We enable watching and we like to see the output of this compilation. Now we have a launch.json file and what it does when it launches is it just invokes that node task that we defined earlier and it sets a couple other options that are interesting to us. I've also included a settings.json file so there are a couple things that exist in the folder won't show up for you. So for example, there's a note modules folder here, but you don't see it in the editor. If you go into the app folder, you also see JavaScript and JavaScript map files, which are a result of compiling the TypeScript. Again, you don't see it in your IDE. So it's all hidden away from you so that you can focus on your code and not on the actual um, large scale application. One other thing you'll notice with the task is that we're not running the TypeScript compiler globally. This way you can say in your package.json file which version of TypeScript compiler to install locally and ensure that every developer on your team is using the same version of TypeScript. You don't have to worry about which version of TypeScript is installed globally on their machine. I'm going to hit F5 one more time. And once debug and start, you indicate about an orange bar, I'm able to go in and actually dynamically make changes to the application. So I can go in and do some interesting things like maybe I want to change the HTML. So for app component.html, I might want to go in and create a subtitle. So I created the subtitle, hit save, and you see my application is updated right away. Maybe I want to add um, a binding for a property called subtitle. Of course, this is going to fail because that property doesn't exist. So I need to go add it to my TypeScript file. And just like with the HTML file, your TypeScript files can be updated in real time too. So subtitle, string, hello, everyone. Save, and you'll see that the application is updated. So I can actually edit everything in real time. I don't necessarily have to stop debugging, restart debugging. I get that same rich development experience. I expect from any high class ID that you have to pay for. I can do all this within Visual Studio Code, usually just using the task JSON, settings JSON, all the other JSON files. So with this Yelman generator in Visual Studio Code, I get a first class Angular 2 development experience. And again, it's all open source. So if you want to enhance it, if you want to build upon it, go for it. We built the basics, but there's all sorts of things you can add to it. Maybe you want to add unit testing. Maybe you want to fork it and you want to do Angular 2 routing. I encourage you to just take this Yelman generator and use it as a starting point for all your Angular 2 projects within your development teams.